This question states, consider the three TTT diagrams shown below. Given what you know about the iron carbon phase diagram, predict which of these corresponds to eutectoid steel, hypoeutectoid steel, and hypereutectoid steel. So, a TTT diagram stands for time temperature transformation. And so on these plots, you see that on the y-axis we have temperature, on the x-axis we have time, and then the colored lines here, the red, the blue, the green, the yellow, these represent the transformation, right? In all these cases, we're cooling the steel from above the eutectoid temperature, where it's going to be in the austenite phase. And then as we cool it, we typically form a mixture of ferrite plus cementite, although it is possible to bypass the formation of those and to form martensite. Right? Martensite. So, how do we know which one of these is which? Let's start by reminding ourselves what the steel phase diagram looks like. We're just going to sketch the bottom left quadrant. So as you go from pure iron, increasing temperature, we know that there is a eutectoid temperature at about 727C. That's our eutectoid temperature. We know that there's a eutectoid composition at 0 0.76 weight percent carbon. We know that there's a very small region of solid solubility over here. Where we have the ferrite phase, right? Pure ferrite. All the way over here, if you let it go all the way over, this would reach 6.7 weight percent carbon, and that's where we would find cementite, Fe3C. And then in this region, we have a mixture of alpha plus Fe3C. Up here, this would then be a mixture of, this would be pure austenite, and this would be ferrite plus austenite, whereas over here, we would have austenite plus Fe3C. Okay, now that we've got a sketch of that, we can remind ourselves which one of these is which. Let's take a look at this far left one. At this far left one, up here at a high temperature, say 800 Celsius, at no time, we would have the austenite phase, right? Now, if you were to take this and you were to let it stay for a long time there, eventually you would actually start to form A plus C. That C is gonna stand for cementite, and the A is gonna stand for austenite. So that's clearly telling us that at that temperature, as you hold it, even 800C, you're over here, right? You're forming austenite and Fe3C, and you're doing so above the eutectoid temperature, this right here. So this one, this first diagram right here, this must correspond to a carbon concentration greater than 0 0.76. We call that hyper-eutectoid. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This next one, right at the eutectoid temperature, if you were to hold that a very long time, eventually it's reaching the point where you would get to spheroidite. It's never forming a pro-eutectoid phase. Therefore, this must be our eutectoid steel. As you're cooling it down, it only starts to transform to a mixture of you know, perlite or spheroidite. Um, exactly below the, the eutectoid temperature. So this must be our eutectoid composition. And then this one should be our hypoeutectoid. Let's make sure it is. Again, just above the eutectoid composition, if you hold it there long enough, you start to form a mixture of A and F. A, we know, stands for austenite. F is going to stand for ferrite. This is our pro-eutectic ferrite. Therefore, this phase over here, or this TTT diagram over here, must correspond to hypoeutectoid. Hypoeutectoid steel. So, does this all make sense? Some things we can be sure of. For example, let's say that we are, um, let's say that we did cool this one down a little bit and then we start to do some sort of heat treatment. We hold it out there. First, it's going to form a mixture of austenite and ferrite. Then in this region, you've got a mixture of your austenite that's not yet transformed yet, 
your ferrite, that's going to be your proeutectoid ferrite, and perlite. So as, as the austenite is consumed, it's going to form the perlite. And in the end, what you're left with is a ferrite plus perlite. So your proeutectoid uh, ferrite will remain on the grain boundaries. And everywhere that you had austenite before, that will be converted to perlite.